so next model what we are going to say is the development of face so already you know that similar to your development of tongue some swellings are involved here also we have the processes involved actually what we have actually this is your stomatodium that is our future mouth so above that what we have is our frontonasal process so this is frontonasal process if you go down below the stomatodium what we have is the your mandibular process so mandibular process is nothing but the ventral end of first pharyngeal arch so from that we have the formation of another process that is called as maxillary process so these are all the processes involved in the development of face so we have two mandibular processes two maxillary processes one frontonasal process the location is important so this is our stomatodium feature mouth so above that what we have is the frontonasal process below that what we have is the mandibular process on either side of stomatodium what we have is the maxillary process so that is important so the if you take the sensory nerve supply of face so already you know that major source is the trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve divided into three divisions so ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular that you have to correlate here whatever part of the face derived from frontonasal process will be supplied by ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve whatever derived from maxillary process will be supplied by your maxillary division of trigeminal nerve whatever derived from mandibular process will be supplied by mandibular division of trigeminal nerve so that you should be able to correlate now first we will see what happens to frontonasal process so in the frontonasal process on either end you will be having formation of a pit that is called as nasal pit so like that on either side will be having formation of nasal pit so the formation of nasal pit leads to division of your frontonasal process what you have on the medial side is called as medial nasal process what you have on the lateral side is called as lateral nasal process so like that on the other side so this is medial nasal process this is lateral nasal process that's what your frontonasal process is divided into two medial nasal process so this is the median plane so on adjacent to that what you have is the medial nasal process laterally what you have is the lateral nasal process now this is the nasal pit corresponding to the two nasal cavities initially they are wide apart next this is your maxillary process this is your mandibular process so now what happens fusion of all these processes together leads to formation of our final face so first the fusion of the two mandibular processes with each other takes place in the early stage itself so that's why the cleft in the lower lip is very rare so these two mandibular processes are getting fused to form our lower lip as well as lower jaw now this maxillary process forms your upper jaw so now we will see what happens to each so important point is the nasal pits are wide apart okay so this is the right nasal cavity this is the left nasal cavity see the space in between the two so initially the nasal pits are wide apart later on they are getting approximated by the enlargement of the maxillary process so this maxillary process is getting proliferated so that will be enlarged in size at that time what happens means so on either side so you will be having enlargement of this maxillary process that leads to approximation of the nasal cavity so during the approximation of nasal cavity what happens these two medial nasal process are getting fused so these two are getting fused to form the central part of the upper lip that is philtrum so already you know that in the central part of the upper lip we have a depression that depression is called as philtrum so that philtrum is formed by the fusion of these two medial nasal processes that is important so fusion of right and left 
medial nasal process with each other only leads to formation of piltrum so if there is any defect in this fusion of these two you will be having cleft in the site of piltrum so that is called as median cleft okay so that is important so these two medial nasal processes are getting fused during the proliferation of our maxillary process so that is the development of center part of the upper lip now if you come to the lateral part of the upper lip that is formed by the fusion of maxillary process with the medial nasal process so these two are getting fused to form the lateral part of the upper lip are you clear so if you take that your development of central part of the upper lip that is formed by the fusion of these two these two means right and left medial nasal processes okay now if we come to the lateral part of upper lip that is formed by the fusion of medial nasal process with this maxillary process okay so that is the development of lateral part of the upper lip now what happens to this lateral nasal process so this lateral nasal process forms our ala of the nose okay so what is involved in the development of upper lip means the fusion of these two medial nasal process with each other then fusion of your medial nasal process with maxillary process okay so that's why if there is any defect in the fusion of this medial nasal process with maxillary process you will be having cleft in the lateral part of upper lip so that is called as lateral cleft so already i told you will be having cleft in the site of piltrum that is median cleft so this is lateral cleft so what you have to know is how that defects are formed that is important so failure of fusion of these two medial nasal process with each other leads to defect in the piltrum so that is called as median cleft next cleft is in the lateral part lateral part of upper lip is formed by the fusion of medial nasal process with your maxillary process okay so if there is any defect in this fusion that leads to cleft in the lateral part that is called as lateral cleft okay so now important point this maxillary process also fuses with your mandibular process so initially if you see the stomatodium the mouth uh, otherwise feature mouth it is wide so later on it is getting reduced in size by the fusion of maxillary process with your mandibular process so that is also important so if there is any defect in the fusion of maxillary process with the mandibular process that leads to macrostomia that is wide mouth so maxillary process fuses with your medial nasal process as well as your mandibular process another important thing this maxillary process also fuses with this lateral nasal process so if there is any defect here in the failure of fusion of your lateral nasal process with the maxillary process that leads to a cleft called as oblique facial cleft so oblique facial cleft so what is the reason for that failure of fusion of lateral nasal process with your maxillary process so all these things are important so how the cleft is formed okay so that's why the development of face is important we used to ask about the developmental anomalies of face so at that time you should be able to explain all these things next here median cleft so as i told already the mandibular processes are getting fused in the early stage itself that's why the cleft in the lower lip is very very rare another reason only these two processes are involved but in the development of upper lip we are having fusion of your medial nasal process maxillary process lateral nasal process like that we have involvement of more than one processes that's why the cleft in the upper lip is more common when compared to the cleft in the lower lip so if the model is given you should be able to tell all these things no point in simply identifying these structures this is medial nasal process this is nasal pit this is your lateral nasal pit that's what you people used to tell so you should be able to explain all these things you have to understand the what is the reason for the cleft in the upper lip as well as lower lip what are the various steps